Welcome everyone, I'm Brent Testerman with CFM Company. In this video, you'll learn how to set up the embedded field bus for BACnet MSTP serial communications on the ABB ACH580 base drive using the primary settings menu. Please be aware if you are working on an ABB ACH580 that includes an Eclipse bypass, the BACnet MSTP is configured through the Bypass Control Unit and will be covered in a separate video. Warning: Obey the instructions provided in the IONM shipped with this drive. If you ignore them, injury or death or damage to the equipment can occur. Before removing the front cover to the ABB ACH580, disconnect power to the drive. Lock and tag out the circuit disconnect and make sure that reconnection is not possible. Always wait 5 minutes to let the intermediate circuit capacitors discharge before you continue. Remove the front cover to expose the control terminals. If multiple devices will be connected to the network, the communication wires must be daisy-chained. The serial communications wires will be landed on the removable embedded field bus terminal labeled EFB. Connect the positive network wire to terminal 29 labeled B+. In our example, this is the white wire. Connect the negative network wire to terminal 30, labeled A-. In our example, this is the black wire. For three wire communication networks, connect the optional reference wire to terminal 31, labeled D, G, and D. Note, the network wire shield is not landed to the drive. The wire shield should be twisted together and taped to prevent contact with other conductors. Terminate the shield only at the ground terminal in the building automation controller. The ACH580 includes both a termination switch and a bias switch below the EFB terminal. If the drive is at either end of the network, set the termination switch on. This adds an end of line 120 ohm resistor to the end of the network. One device, preferably at either end of the network, must have the bias switch on. The bias switch can help improve the communication of the network. If the drive is not at the end of the network, both the term and bias switches should be off. Each device on the network requires a unique MAC address and instance ID. Ask the building automation contractor for a list of addresses for all of the drives on the project. You will also need to know the network baud rate. For this video, we will use the instance ID of 105812, where the last two digits of the instance ID is also the MAC address. The network baud rate will be 76.8 kilobits per second. Once the communication wires are landed, secure the drive cover and apply power to the drive. From the home screen, press Menu, select Primary Settings, arrow down to Communication, press Select, select Embedded Field Bus, select Communication Setup. Now you will edit the following BACnet settings. EFB Selection, choose BACnet MSTP and press Save. Next is the station ID. What is the station ID? If at any time you have a question about what a menu item is, simply push the question mark button. When you push the question mark button, the display will provide relative information. Station ID for this drive must be unique within the network segment. The information for this example shows that the last two digits of the instance ID will be the local address. The local address can also be referred to as the MAC address, the station ID, or the device address. The local ID is not always the last two digits of the instance ID. It can also be a unique number between 1 and 247. Press Exit to return to the Communication Setup menu. Press Edit at Station ID. Change the value to 12. And press Save. Next is Baud Rate. The default is Auto. In Auto, the Baud Rate is detected automatically. In our example, the Baud Rate is 76.8K. Press Edit and change the value to 76.8K and press Save. Next is the Device Object ID. Press the question mark button to get more information. The Device Object ID needs to be unique across all BACnet devices in the building network. For this video, the instance ID is 105812. The instance ID can also be referred to as the global address. For a BACnet MSTP network, there must be both a local address and a global address for each device on the network. In the ACH580, these are referred to as the station ID and the device instance ID. Press exit to return to the communication setup menu. Press edit at the device object ID and change the value to 105812 and press save. Next is max master. Press the question mark button. This is the highest master address number of devices on the BACnet MSTP bus. Press Exit. The default is 127. 
Leave this at the default for basic setup. Next is max info frames. Press the question mark button. This is the maximum number of information frames the device may transmit before it must pass the token. Press exit. In other words, this device is restricted to only transmitting one piece of information before it must pass the token to the next address on the network. If every device on the network is programmed to pass only one piece of information at a time, the token can be passed along rapidly. It is this efficiency that can make it possible to transmit large amounts of data fast on the network. Leave the max info frames at the default value of 1. Next is the max ADP retries. Press the question mark button. This is the number of retries to send when no response is seen to confirmed requests. In other words, the drive will try to resend data three times without a response before it stops. Press exit. Leave this at the default value of three. Next is if communication fails. Press the question mark button. What to do until field bus communication is back online? Ignore. Keep following the received reference. No fault or warning. Fault. Coast to stop and show a fault message. Last speed. Freeze the speed to its current level and show a warning message. The speed is the actual speed with 850 millisecond low pass filtering. Fault always. Coast to stop and show a fault message even if communication is for monitoring only. Custom safe reference. Set the reference to a value selected below. Press exit to return to the communication setup menu. With the if communication fails highlighted, press edit. The correct choice depends on the critical nature of the equipment and the requirements of the owner. Remember that loss of communication action can always be changed later as needed. If custom safe reference is selected, an additional menu item, safe frequency reference, is added. Simply edit the desired safe frequency reference value and press save. For this example, keep the default value of ignore. Press save to return to the communication setup menu. Next is communication under monitoring. Press the question mark button. Selects the type of messages to monitor. Press exit. Leave this at the default value of CW slash ref1 slash ref2. With this selected, the drive is going to watch the command word, the reference one word, and the reference two word. If at any time one of these three words is not received, the timeout counter will start. Next is ignore failure shorter than. Press the question mark button. The tolerance range for field bus communication failures. The action selected above applies only for failures longer than this. Time count starts when the communication link fails to update the message. Press exit. Leave this at the default value of 30 seconds. The last setting is apply settings to embedded field bus. Press the question mark button. Restarts the embedded field bus to apply the new settings. As with most serial communication devices, the ABB ACH580 requires a restart to apply the new settings. Press exit to return to the communication setup menu. After select is pressed, the drive will display field bus module restarting, taking new settings into use. Once complete, the backnet is programmed. Press the back button five times to return to the home screen. Not covered in this video, the ACH580 does have a diagnostics menu. Press menu. Arrow down to diagnostics. Press select. Arrow down to communication status. Press select. Select embedded field bus EFB. The diagnostic screens can help to confirm proper communication with the building automation system and also to help troubleshoot communication issues. Thank you for watching this video. Visit us at cfmcompany.com to learn more about each of the manufacturers we represent.